Welcome back to the shop. It's good to see you again. Um, I've been fiddling with the CNC router bed and uh, I've got a problem. So um, let me show you and I'll explain because I think you might be able to help. So what I've done is the, uh, I've taken the control box um, out of his cubby hole and uh, through these two cables, tiny little cables, hopefully you can see those, uh, I've taken uh, a ground connection and the connection from the foil layer in the middle of the uh, in the middle of this new bed. So if I turn on my multimeter, which is on the other end of those cables, and put it into resistance, when I ground out this um, uh, any one of these these uh, metal contacts, it should beep. There we go. So we have reliable connection between uh, here and the Arduino. Well, let me plug the Arduino in and um, you'll, uh, uh, I'll explain what I've got going on here. <clears throat> okay, I plug the Arduino in and I'll, uh, I'll explain what's going on here. Uh, the, the meter now says five volts and that uh, is because uh, I've enabled the weak pull-up resistors in the inputs to this Arduino, which means that uh, an input pin is, is held at five volts with a very uh, high resistance uh, drive, if you like. So uh, you can over, override that quite easily with, uh, with a short circuit and you won't blow the chip up. Uh, it saves you putting in a, a separate resistor to do it. So uh, I have connected up a relay and the bed comes in on these two cables. And uh, so what happens is if I short the bed out and simulate a crash, it should, oh blimey, it should um, lock the relay on and it will remain locked on. There we go. So I short the bed out and the relay has fired. The Arduino has picked up the fact that the, the bed has gone from five volts to zero volts and it's doing this incredibly quickly. Um, it's in the order of microseconds. So uh, every few microseconds, it's checking to see if the bed has gone to zero volts. If it has, it triggers a relay and remains on. Now here's the problem, or oh, here's the first problem, which is why I, one of the reasons I used an Arduino. The, um, the relay is now holding the router in e-stop so none of the axes will move you really want to be able to move the uh, the tool away from the the crash site so that you you open the circuit up again and uh, you can't do that while it's in e-stop it, all the axes are locked so I've added a switch now this switch will lock it out for a predetermined length of time so <clears throat> In this case, it's set to 15 seconds. So for 15 seconds, the bed is held off the, uh, off the e-stop position. That gives you time to jog the, the, the tool away from the crash. And then you're, you're good to go again, assuming you haven't done any damage. That's absolutely hunky-dory and tiggity-boo. That works fine. I've tested this. It's run for about three days without any false triggering whatsoever. It's been perfect. As you can see, I've got my scope back. So uh, let's just have a little look and see how this pans out. I'll connect channel one to the bed and, uh, and I've also grounded the scope out. So uh, here we go. Um, that trace is right in the center. Let's move that so it's absolutely in the center. And uh, we're on ground at the moment. So if I turn it on, there you go. It's gone up the first division which is 0.5 volt per division, and this is a 10 to one probe, so that's five volts. That's what we expect. So if I ground the, uh, the bed out with my piece of cable, that should go down to zero, which we know is gonna happen. There we go, goes down to zero, and then back up when I turn it off. That's absolutely fine. Here's the issue. I'll just turn on the uh, control box for the CNC router and you'll see exactly what I mean. Look at the noise. 
Now this, this uh, uh, scope is quite old fashioned, but it does have an auto set function which is useful. And it's not really done a very good job there. There we go. Uh, turn the chase intensity up. I mean, you, hopefully you can see, it's absolutely crawling with noise. So uh, let me bring the cursors in and we'll, we'll measure that. Um, where are the cursors, 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 there we go, cursors. Um, we want dark time, we want voltage. Yeah, turn the text off. So there we go, if we set that to there, and that one, to there, we have 720 millivolts, which is 0.7 of a, 0.7 of a, uh, of a volt, um, and this is a 10 to 1 probe, so that's about 7 volts. This is false triggering the Arduino. I think it's coming from the actual stepper motor drivers in the control box. So it spuriously triggers this, tr this uh, Arduino all the time. Just for fun, I'm gonna jog this machine around. Let's, um, let's see if that makes any difference. Yeah, you can see, um, see it definitely uh, It's definitely picking up the pulses driving the stepper motors. So this is what I've been thinking. If I just sketch out my thoughts, um, uh, you'll see if you agree or disagree. So if I draw a box, that's the Arduino. Arduino, that goes out to a relay. Uh, and the contacts for that go out to the e-stop. The, uh, the e-stop in the control box. So, um, the input to the Arduino is connected to the bed and that's picking up noise. So the, I think I've, I can improve the, the situation quite dramatically um, by doing this. The, the Arduino runs on 5 volts, 5 volts DC. The uh, control box runs on basically 24 volts. So if I take 24 volts and put that onto the bed, and then from the bed, I'm not made this particularly easy to understand, but uh, bed, put two, a resistor ladder down to ground, and connect the Arduino there. The Arduino can only cope with five volts as an, as an input. So if I choose the right resistors, uh, if I put two equal size resistors there, then that would be at 12 volts. So this one has got to be uh, like four times the, the value of this one. But if I, if I make that, so the maximum, e max voltage there is equal to five volts. The noise will still be on this circuit, but the noise will have been compressed by the ratio of these resistors. So if it's, if it's uh, a 4 to 1 ratio, let's say, then um, my 0.7 of a volt, 700 millivolts um, uh, of noise, has now become 0.0, uh, 0 uh, what's 0.7 divided by 4? I don't know the answer to that. Let me work that out. Right, my noise level has gone down to... 0.175. Let me write that out so you can read it. 0.175 volts. So that gives me a significant advantage. Uh, and if I, instead of connecting uh, this, uh, the, the input to a digital input pin, I could connect it to uh, an analog pin. So uh, with an analog pin, 
if your incoming voltage is, is varying, you can measure that voltage and say, okay, that's normal noise. Uh, in electronics, it's called coring. So you take that section out of the, of the calculation. So anything that's over that or anything that's under that triggers an e-stop. So I think that would be the best bet, but I don't know. So I could spend weeks sorting this out and I don't really want to spend weeks on it. I've got a, a workshop to fit out. Um, so I'm opening it up for help. Anybody got a better suggestion, please let me know. As you can see, this half of the workshop's just a dumping ground at the moment and I need um, cupboards, shelving, desks, and, uh, and I've got to get my big, la my big lathe, my lathe in here and my CNC mill. So there's a lot of stuff to come in here and I don't want to spend hours and hours figuring out how to make that, um, that anti-crash bed work properly. The other thing I wanted to mention was uh, a friend of mine has uh, uh, given me this reel. Um, he wants to keep it for sentimental reasons uh, and it's broken. I'll show you a close-up. I've, um, uh, I've been trying to fix it and I'm drawing a bit of a blank. So if anybody has got um, a Ryobi Master Match MM200 reel that's broken uh, or they don't want, um, particularly in the UK, that would be extremely useful to replace the, the broken part rather than try to fix it. So uh, I'll give you a close up and you'll see how difficult it is. Now, this is inside the, um, um, the, the, the spinning section of the reel with a bail arm on it. And this pawl here is broken. And as you can see, I've, um, I've put a couple of screws in it and made a um, a piece to go the, on the top and the bottom and this works I can fix it but it's not reliable it breaks fairly quickly so it's that pawl that I need to replace so if anybody's got that or uh, this looks similar to another Ryobi real pawl then uh, I'd appreciate please get in touch with me and we'll see if we can get this fixed um, so uh, yeah so that's it for, for this week. Sorry it's not been a, a proper video. The, there is a video coming out hopefully next week on the shenanigans with that reel. I've tried five times so far with different things to try and fix that reel and I'm just, I'm really struggling with it. And I would quite like to do it, uh, to get it fixed because um, uh, he's, a, he's a decent old boy who, who um, owns it. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay safe and uh, the, CNC router over there. Uh, I don't need the the anti crash bed for the moment, but uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to park that. But if somebody's got a cracking idea as to how to get rid of that noise, or to um, uh, come up with another way of uh, of doing it, then I'm all ears. But in the meantime, I can use it. It's it, it's uh, up and running. I just need to put. Um, uh, a spoil board on it and machine that flat, excuse me, and then um, that's ready to go because I need that for the, uh, some subsequent operations I need to make in this shop. Oh, it's so complicated, isn't it? It's like paying, do you not find that life is, is like having one of those, those old fashioned um, square puzzles where you have to slide things around? You have to slide umpteen parts around until you get to a position where you could do the thing you want them to do. It never stops, does it? Never bloody stops. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully I'll see you again on the next one. Take care and uh, ta-ta. I'll go and find the cat, I think.